Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we will unbox the Sapphire Pulse RX7600 which has 8GB of VRAM. I bought this for 17,700 pesos which is cheaper as compared to 6600 when it came out. Anyway around the box we can see the product specs which only contains the output. It has 3 display ports and 1 HDMI. We can also see the system specs but realistically speaking it is not a system specifications but rather a system specification requirement. Anyway opening the box. Inside the box is a brown box and inside that box is already the GPU. You can see that it is padded by a thin foam and I think the box protects it naturally. Underneath the GPU is their address and a manual. Some plastic is stuck there by the way. Anyway, this is the GPU. The color team is pretty much the same as the previous generation. There are no covers for the PCIe connector, but it has covers for the output ports. Obviously, it has two fans, and as for the dimensions, it is 240mm by 107mm by 44.07mm, which also means that this is a bit longer than the previous gen and may not fit sub 6 liter ITX cases. And as for comparison, this is the previous gen GPU which is a lot shorter. There are some new design, but pretty much the color theme is the same. As it is 44mm in thickness, it also means that it is slightly more than two slots. And again, as for the output ports, it has three display ports and one HDMI. It has a nice looking backplate, although Sapphire didn't utilize it for heat dissipation as it lacks thermal pads at the back. It requires a single 8-pin power connector and its total board power is 185 watts. As for its cooling design, it blows to the sideways, which is actually normal for this size. Anyway, as for the temps while benchmarking F 15 for 30 minutes, the GPU temps averaged at 72.06 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 74 degrees Celsius. The hotspot temps averaged at 88.35 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 91 degrees Celsius. The memory junction temps averaged at 84.46 degrees Celsius with a max temp of 86 degrees Celsius. The GPU fan was at an average of 43.79% and a max of 49.8% or equivalent to 2065 RPM. Overall, the temperature performance was mediocre, although it wasn't loud. But given the high RPM already, expect it to be loud during summer or likely inside a bad case. And as for the benchmarks, Okay, so overall performance, this is a good 1080p card and a not bad entry level 1440p card. Although on average, this is 135 FPS on 1080p and 90 FPS on 1440p, which is really not bad. In an average comparison to other GPUs, it's definitely not a chart topper. But if I project the price of each GPU based on performance gains or losses against 7600, this makes the other GPUs really overpriced compared to 7600, such as the 4060 Ti to be priced at $340 max only. Other than the 7600, the only sane price is the previous gen RX 6600 which is also available in the Philippines at that price point. As compared to RTX 3060 which has the same price point in the Philippines, the RX 7600 is around 10-11% to better making the RTX 3060 a weak buy as well. For the other previous gen Radeon GPUs, those are not available in the Philippines at that price point making them pointless in this discussion. However at 4K it's best not to talk about it as it is really bad. Again putting the average comparison to other GPUs and projecting the price of each GPU will make the NVIDIA GPUs somehow suddenly worth it. Although realistically, 4060 Ti is not an ideal 4K GPU based on its current performance. And you should really look at 4070 for 4K gaming at the minimum. As for overall recommendations for 1080p and 1440p, the RX 6600 is really a good budget GPU. If you want 30% boost in performance, you should also pay 30% more to get the RX 7600. In turn, if you have this money, this GPU will last longer than the 6600 for modern titles. For 4K again, I suggest getting 
getting the RTX 4070 at the minimum. Lastly, buying Radeon cards means buying into AMD's drivers, which I did have one issue while benchmarking. As for Sapphire Solution, again, this is mediocre at best. I can't strongly recommend it, but it's not something that you should avoid as well. Okay, so that's it for this video. Do comment down below on what you think of this GPU. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!